Back when I did 100 Things You Didn't Notice in the Tony Hawk games, it pretty much felt like the series was dead. And now, rather surreally, we're not only getting remakes of Tony Hawk 1 and 2, but there's also a documentary about the series that's about to drop on August 18th, which I got to check out and absolutely loved it. So definitely check it out when it drops on Tuesday. Thanks to the last video, I got to know the director of the documentary, Lugvig Gurr, who introduced me to Ralph Diamato, the producer of the Tony Hawk games, who was down to answer questions about the game's many mysteries. And also, thank you to Femora9 for making this video possible. The simplest editor for beginners. Download a free trial down below. I watch your videos and, and I just am amazed at all the different little intricacies that get pulled out. So as the games got bigger and bigger, you know, we added on more designers and they all wanted to add their little flair and not tell any of the production people. So <laughs> yeah, as long as it wasn't something to get kicked back from the ESRB, they were cool to do things, but it was always riding a line on, on that stuff because you never knew what could happen. And this is the time where the whole that Grand Theft Auto and, and ESRB were getting really tight. Sony didn't want anybody to have Easter eggs in it anymore and all that good stuff so oh really yeah i mean you were supposed to really tell for instance the first that private carrera right yeah when we went into testing with sony that wasn't announced to them that hey we have this secret character in <laughs> <laughs> it was a little less restrictive so it was the good old days some of them i definitely can can help you out on some of them like that i saw i was like really <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest mysteries with the game, with the first game, is the mysterious three women that can be found in the game, the, the yeah. mysterious images. These are like always popping up on Reddit, and I see a video about it on YouTube all the time, and there's all these rumors. And the big rumor seems to be that it's Tony Hawk's girlfriends. I have no idea no. where that's coming from. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. Yeah, I can spell that one. Okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't believe any of those were in the, the PS1 version. Never saw didn't develop the N64 version. Another company, I believe it was Edge of Reality. Is that yeah. mm -hmm. right? Okay, Edge of Reality, they were the ones that did the, the N64 version. So, I, and the only one that I really knew about was the one, and we saw at the office with the one, I think you have to put a cheat code in and then the, the picture comes on the menu. Yeah, I think there's two of them that do that. When we were at Neversoft and we saw that, I can recall it was somebody's wife or girlfriend and it was somebody higher up at, at Edge of Reality. I don't know, it was the president, the producer, whoever it was, somebody over there. That's the only one that I knew of. The other two that, that, that I've seen and I saw in your video, I, I can only imagine some designer over there going, well, if he got to put his wife in, I'm gonna <laughs> put mine. I wasn't as stoked on it, you know, I, I'm sure maybe some of the other guys felt the same way. You, you kind of hope that when somebody's doing the original game and making a port, the only way I could think of it is if I recorded a song and then someone totally changed the beat to it or something, it, you know, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> but I get it. Yeah, I don't think they would have put in a photo of Hawk's girlfriend. I think Tony was married at the time too, so. Yeah. <laughs> This next one, I'm not sure if you'll really be able to answer it based off of what you said, because I think this is another N64 thing. There's like this glitch where if you type in a TYR as your name on the high score menu, like the entire game completely acts all screwy, like there's text over every corner of the screen, and eventually the game crashes. Do you have any idea what's the deal with TYR? It sounds like this N64 bug. Yeah. I wasn't really concerned about the N64 testing. We were we were focused on our platform. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, it just that sounds like a, some kind of weird bug having to do with those characters. You said TYR. Yeah. When you look at those characters in a font, they're sort of the wider characters. So mm. I don't. That's the only thing I could think of. My opinion of that can't confirm or deny something with those particular fonts that had corruption. If it was a guy that did that on purpose, I'm impressed. Right, right. <laughs> That's pretty ballsy. Anything like maybe TYR was like a debug code or something like that. We did have a lot of debug um, things that tools that could have been left behind. I don't know. I was gonna stay a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> My conclusion, simple bug. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy who commented and he literally sent me like 30 tidbits about the series that I'd never, I couldn't find them anywhere on the internet. Okay. His name was Connor Cody and one of the things that he said that I had never heard was that Private Carrera was based on 
Mercedes Carrera, the, the porn star, and she threatened to sue you guys over there at Neversoft, and that was the reason for Private Carrera being removed from the series. Is there any truth to that? I, I couldn't find any information about that anywhere. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he even got the porn star wrong. So oh, really? it wasn't it wasn't Mercedes Carrera. It was Asia Carrera. Okay. It was the name of the porn star. That's the wrong story too. The fact of the matter, Private Carrera was created by Noel Hines, character artist that created all the original characters. He owned a Porsche, and okay. Carrera was his favorite car. That's where the name Private Carrera came from. Funny thing is that rumor about Asia Carrera actually got to her. Oh. And she came to Neversoft one day. She visited our office. She was, you know, interested in the video game thing. And Joel invited her, hey, you want to come over and check us out? You know, she was really cool. She came into the office and it was cool for the guys in the office for a porn star to come in. It, and it was, <laughs> yeah, that was, when you think of a bunch of video game programmers and a porn star, it was, it was a very classic scene, you know, poking their heads out of their offices and not trying to make eye contact and stuff. <laughs> So was there any thoughts of like adding her to the game or that just didn't... No, no. I mean, it was, you know, we already had the character. We didn't... Right. I, why would we license? It was already there. But then following up, though, later on, we did add uh, Daisy, which is Jenna Jameson. Right. She actually came into the office as well. And it was it was a pretty classic scene that I won't get too in depth with. But we had to do a, <laughs> a reference photo shoot with Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> We had to get every detail right, I'm sure. Yeah, you don't see it, but I'm putting air quotes up. So, um... <laughs> Was she brought in at all as a reference to the rumors? No, I don't think so, because within Neversoft, it wasn't like, wasn't something that lingered too much, but you know, I don't think there was any indications of a lawsuit or anything like that. It was, it was way too friendly for that. There were other things that happened that never happened. So that one was debunked. So. Yeah, yeah, debunked. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. During mm -hmm. the retro Tony Hawk video, he's skating back and forth on the skate ramp on the half pipe. And while he's in mm -hmm. the air, you can see what appears to be very clearly a UFO uh, <laughs> <laughs> pass by in the back. I, I've never heard of this one. <laughs> oh, you haven't? Uh, no, no. So this is actually, so you're saying in the skateboard, like the, the real life videos. Yeah, there's one that, that you unlock and it's like from the 80s. Okay, let me, let me look at this thing. I think it's those parachute rides at an amusement park. I think that's what that looks like to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what Let me look at it one more time. It's interesting. I'll, I'll send this over to Tony. Yeah. Go, hey, dude, what's that <laughs> UFO behind you? Yeah. Well, Ralph contacted the Birdman himself, and he simply sent back this image. So I think we can say that this UFO case is closed. With the cruise ship, there's the really random and strange Easter egg of where you break all the glass, and then there's like the, the dialogue of the captain, he gets thrown out the window, yep. and then the real captain comes in, and I think it's a different voice. Yes, you skater down there. You have shattered the glass and set me free. It's just such a weird... Yeah, that, that's Brian Jennings, designer, that designed that level, and he's the voice. He was a funny guy and liked to kind of do his own little stories. I don't know if there was any background story to it. That'd be a, a more of a question for him. But I think it was just, you know, late night, probably too much coffee and, uh, <laughs> and Red Bull and just, hey, this is funny. Let's do this. And, you know, and that was which, which game? Which game was that? That was three. Okay, three. So three, we had moved to DVD. So we had a bit more disc space. <laughs> <laughs> so just taking so, advantage of that. Yeah. And just, you know, giving a little bit more flavor and, and, and a little more fun for for people to kind of sit through that that totally i could see brian doing that that's his personality it's just him is basically how yeah, that yeah. summed up yep yeah the cruise ship level is all of it is that kind of a little out there kind of crazy one of my favorite levels too but it's a little bit on the quirky side and, and brian was too <laughs> Here's a bonus from Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. It took me forever to figure out what triggers this. And I finally figured out that only after you complete the pickpocket goal on the airport and then reset the session. The message on this sign changes to Noel owes me 5,000 bucks. I asked Ralph if he had any idea what this meant. It's just a really innocuous bet between two guys on the team. <laughs> if you really want to know what, what the bet was, basically whether or not 
an automobile manufacturer was manufacturing cars in a specific state. That was it. So like if Corvettes were being made yeah. in Kentucky or exactly, something. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Stupid little bet. Somebody, oh, okay. somebody <laughs> didn't pay, but, but he got his payment by putting that, that message that probably, I don't know, five people saw. <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of different answers for all the time. The meaning behind the goat Easter eggs that were in all the different games. Yeah. A lot of people say that it stands for greatest of all time, referring to Tony Hawk. And a lot of other people say it's a reference to B-Goat. Um, what do you think it is? I kind of know what it is. <laughs> and it's a little on the embarrassing side. <laughs> it's like some story about a guy that, that had sex with a goat and this kind of <laughs> played off of it sort of like that theme throughout <laughs> our art director um at the time he had a affinity to goat eyeballs he thought they looked super evil and they do if you ever look at a goat's eyeball it looks yeah, kind of bizarro do. and i see in your screenshots that i'm embarrassingly looking at this goat and this guy's <laughs> looking at the goat and the goat's on a bed and you kind of <laughs> understand what that i mean that's just just what you see, a guy in, in a bedroom with a goat on top of a bed and he's looking at its rear end. Uh, <laughs> it tells you about all you need to know. Back then, I probably thought this was hilarious. But now, <laughs> in my head, like, uh, it's a little bit cringy. <laughs> Lots of goats and then there was ever a clock, it was set to 420. That was something else I wanted to ask you about. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, many, yeah, yeah, many yeah. 420 references. Like, obviously, you were aware of it. That was the main thing I was going to ask. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my birthday is, is 420. No, it's not. It's actually not. <laughs> no, no, you know, it's a nod to, to the whole the whole smoking day. So, uh, yeah. You're, if, you're a, if you're a video gamer, I think video game and, and cannabis kind of go hand in hand. And now, especially that it's, it's legal in a lot of places. Um, yeah, that, that's what that was. That was another one of those. Hey, let's be cool and jump on the 420 bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. So these are really just a lot of just childish jokes, really, at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, to play video games and to make video games, you got to be a kid at heart. So that's what a lot of stuff, a lot of this is. It doesn't have yeah. some sort of crazy story behind it. No. So many guys are like, it's definitely a big goat reference. And now you're basically saying, no, it's just a guy looking at a goat's ass. <laughs> I think we had goats in it before where the goat existed, so I, I know what it was about. And I'm embarrassed to admit it, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of <laughs> where that came from. I was never involved in placing any of the goats or anything. I never was an artist. So I can't take credit. <laughs> <laughs> there was never like kind of like, ah, eh, maybe you guys shouldn't put a goat in this one. No. No. <laughs> no. Was there any of the goats you didn't know were in the game? Like you later found out? I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure there were. <laughs> Was there ever a moment where you were like playing the game after release and you saw something and you're like, what? How, how did this get in here? Was there ever a moment like that? Um, there are things that I've seen in your videos that I'm like, whoa, we did that? <laughs> <laughs> Tony Hawk Underground, and I think this also appears in Tony Hawk Underground too. At least a lot of people tell me that, but I don't know where it is. But um, the no Kurt sign. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Who, who the hell is Kurt? Like, I have no idea what's <laughs> what. You know, there's so many guys on the team, and I think we had a couple Kurts. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure who it would be. Probably again, one of those things that somebody was annoying somebody else on the team, and this is how they got back at it. <laughs> you know, somebody didn't get their coffee that morning and got a little annoyed, and or you know, an artist had to clean up something that a designer left behind that was a really ugly piece of geometry, you know, and then an artist had to go in and. Who knows? I mean, and that that's Thug and Thug too, so we're much a much bigger team. I can almost guarantee you, was somebody was like, ah, I know what I can do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would think. Anyway. That definitely yeah. makes sense. talk about in Tony Hawk Underground there was this huge myth I don't know where it came from that there was a hidden hockey player in the game and you had to like <laughs> yeah. yeah I loved watching those videos of people trying to keep scoring and scoring and scoring to get the hockey <laughs> uh, I, was, I, love, I love watching those yeah no that, that never happened was there ever any plans to hide something of like something that elaborate that people wouldn't be able to find do you remember you know, the thing with having a completely a new character like that, like it's more than just adding a character because you'd have to have animations for that, that hockey right. player and you'd have to, and as the games went on, if something like that tapped into more resources, it was like a no-no, you know? If you can get away with something 
simple, then yeah. But was there maybe uh, more intention behind the the hockey rink at one point? I think maybe that's where the rumor came from. Is people just thought it was kind of a weird detail that you could score. Was there? I, I, and I'm not recalling, but was there? Wasn't there a goal around that? I don't think there was that that I can think of. That could have been one of those things that was intended to be a goal and you couldn't get to the final output of it, but it was still kind of cool to let people mess around with the puck and the skateboard, and so we left it in. I remember messing around on there too. I remember, oh cool, I can put the puck in the goal. You know? <laughs> thought it was awesome, and I just yeah. remember going online, everybody's talking about this hockey player dude. I was like, where yeah, did this no, come from? Guy. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I guess people just like to make things up. Bonus mystery from Tony Hawk Underground. For some reason, the original Pro Skater School 1 can be found in the files despite not actually appearing in the game, where this placeholder image can be found. I asked Ralph if he had any idea who this was, and he said he had no idea. Makes me wonder if Asia Carrera almost was going to make it into the game. Do you remember the hidden body on a stretcher in Barcelona on Tony Hawk Underground 2? You, <laughs> you can only find it on the PlayStation 2 version. Uh, like there's a window and you look through it and you see the body on the stretcher and then if you play the Xbox and the GameCube version It's it's not there. So it almost seems like it got censored or something any insight on that No, I don't you know I know that that was probably just put in as background So you could see something in the window and oh, there's something back there uh, And the reason why it might have gotten removed. I, I don't know I mean, I, I don't know why that would have gotten removed on the other platforms we would have issues with transparency and things didn't work as well. He probably came back in a report as a graphical corruption and at that point when you're in testing is not to go in and tweak coding to try to make that transparency work. It's just rip it out and you're done and your bugs close. So this is another one that comes down to a simple bug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> underground to it's the ben frank area and you break into the yep. area and there's all these politicians on the wall they all have clown makeup yep i'm assuming that was just like a political joke or unless there was like maybe more of a story behind that um probably a little bit of a political joke and also obscuring faces for legal reasons if it's a real person you put the clown makeup on you don't know who it is you don't have to worry about licensing Another bonus mystery from Tony Hawk Underground 2. In the files of the game can be found an unused cinematic called testskinmodel.cutngc, which is whatever the f this is. I asked Ralph in a follow-up email if he knew what this was and he said he had no idea. Underground 2, a uh, remix. I'm not sure how much you were involved with remix on the PSP. Not a bunch, no. Go ahead. There's this out of bounds image of this really creepy face. And I would say this right now is probably the biggest mystery that people like to make up, like creepy pasta and all these stories. <laughs> <of>. <laughs> that red face, I have no idea what that red face is. It doesn't ring a bell as an art acid for me that I might've seen. It could have been somebody was testing a texture or something and it just got left there. It's got a creepy look to it. It does, it definitely does. I don't know. This is a game where we're doing the spray paint where you could spray paint things too. Yeah. So it could have been one of those kind of okay. spray paint logo things that, that were that was a test. That, that's kind of what it looks like. It looks like a tag to me. Yeah, there's a large rumor that it might be the Zero skateboarding logo, which has like a, a similar face. But it's a bit different. The, the Zero logo it is. is a bit different. It and is. that's one thing, we never would mess with logos as much because, again, those are legally licensed and they have terms and conditions behind them so we, we we didn't really mess with logos this is just some art asset a tag something that designer was messing around with and it, it just got left in there i wonder if like maybe somebody can go into the files and see if it has a name or something or actually it's probably tied to the environment so it's probably not yeah to do that. yeah yeah oh yeah so i guess that one remains unsolved but we have some good theories like that definitely clears things up a little bit yep. i don't think that yep. thing's haunting anybody in their sleep no, hopefully not in Tony Hawk American Skate Land on the DS, you can wall plane on this wall and land on an invisible rail that takes you out of bounds. While initially this appears to be a glitch, you can actually find secret messages by riding into two exact spots in this area, such as Dachin 3 says the creative skater lives. 
Unfortunately, Ralph wasn't involved with this game, so I wasn't able to ask him about this mystery. Canstein says hide in the bushes in Beverly Hills. Is there still something to be found in Beverly Hills? Like an actual moment in the game or anything that caused controversy that you can think of? There were a few different things, like different creative parks that were named things that shouldn't have been named. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get into any specifics. Probably very, like, low monitoring going on in that section of the game. At the beginning, but then once when somebody complains about stuff, then you got you got all the magnifying glasses on you, and it's <laughs> you're making me want to replay the creative park modes now because I remember like <laughs> losing my <laughs> shit to some of those things. And as you can see, I was able to find a number of questionable things in the original Tony Hawk Underground. And in Tony Hawk Underground 2, I managed to find this guy. Kirk can't catch a break. You know, we were all on the team, a fan of Warren Robinette, the guy that did the first Easter egg and Tari. You know, I, I remember as a kid buying a video game magazine, and bringing that little pixel to the room and going, and it was just the feeling you got was just so, wow, I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. And so the designers understood the importance of those things and you didn't have online play, so you couldn't extend gameplay that way. But hey, there might be some hidden things that I haven't found yet. Let me just keep on playing this and adding gameplay. That's a, a lot of basis of it. That's exactly how it was, because yep. growing up, you know, I only had so many video games, but I had the whole Tony Hawk series, so I'd just be playing them for hours looking for what you guys hid in there. And when I, you know, found the cruise ship Easter egg after breaking yep. all the glass, like, blew my mind. <laughs> Is there anything going on more with the documentary? Yeah, you'll want to check out our website, uh, teenagetracefilm.com, and definitely check out our um, social media. We'll do some quizzes, trivia. Yeah, they definitely need to check it out because I loved it. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. This has been awesome. I get to say now I, I interviewed the producer of the series, and he answered all these questions. I'm so happy we got to do this. Thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate the kind words for sure. Feel free to hit me up. You've got my contact info. Thank you, man. This has been Just awesome. Just don't post it anywhere. Just don't oh, post it. Oh, of course it. not. No, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on the screen below. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again to Femora9 for sponsoring this video. For those wondering what I use to edit my videos, it's primarily Final Cut. And as much as I love Final Cut, it does kind of have a little bit of a learning curve. After using Femora 9, I can easily say that it's probably the best editor I would recommend for somebody just starting to edit. It's super easy to learn. Even my girlfriend Cassie, who's just a beginner, was able to quickly put together some of the title cards that I used in the video. And she's never done it before and it only took her a matter of minutes. I think my favorite thing about Femora 9 is all the pre-made features. It's got music, animated elements, and my favorite thing of all, they have an online stock library called Film Stocks. Which if you've seen my channel before, I always use stock video at the end so that definitely comes in handy. Most importantly, if you're just starting out, it's extremely affordable compared to Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro. And if you're not sure about it, you can try it free today. Check it out in the download link down below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please subscribe. And if you know of any other Tony Hawk discoveries or can figure out some of the things that me and Ralph couldn't, submit to oddheader.com, let me know in the comments down below, or even send me a shout on Twitter or Reddit. And follow me on Twitter as I plan to share some bonus content from this episode. Shout out to Anna Morris, Arizona T, Bitwith27, Dan Duval, Dead Plastic, Decider12, Deer Mid Crowley, Flex, James Fadman, Jonathan A. All Ornalis, The New I Fart in Elevators, Rage Spot, Riley S, Select, Sneaking J, Sosa, Tony Humor, Towerizer, Wade Murdoch, Jan Benier, and Yu Kirby for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.